There is only one story that answers life's most essential questions and gives a lasting sense of purpose and meaning. It's the story that inspires all other stories. It's the true story that defines every one of us. This is that story. How did it all begin? Like all stories, this one begins in the beginning with the author, who is God. He spoke everything into being. With a word, galaxies appeared with stars and planets. Earth was designed for life to flourish. Everything God made was gloriously good and breathtakingly perfect. The highlight of God's creation was the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. God entrusted everything he created to his beloved children, giving just one rule. They were not to eat fruit from a specific tree. They lived in loving obedience, worshiping God as their heavenly father, and enjoying perfect harmony with creation, each other, and God. Considering our world today, it's obvious perfect peace didn't last. Turmoil, war, sickness, troubles. We each have our share. What went wrong? It started when a fallen angel named Satan grew jealous of God and determined to ruin the perfection of creation. Satan took the form of a serpent and enticed Adam and Eve to question God's goodness and rebel against his one rule. In disobedience, they ate the fruit and peace unraveled, ushering in sin and death, which still plagues us today. If we are honest, we are very much like Adam and Eve. We all rebel against our Heavenly Father, making our hearts heavy with fear, guilt, and shame. Our bodies are weary with sickness, disease, and death. Earth is afflicted with storms, calamities, and disasters. Even worse, sin has separated us from God, causing a permanent divide, a miserable separation called hell. The fallout of sin has been catastrophic. It's inescapable with no way to fix it, leaving us all to wonder, is there any hope? The love that prompted God to create us also prompted him to send a savior who would set everything right again. As centuries passed, God shared exact details of the coming savior's birth, life, and death. Everything in the Bible points to this rescuer. Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus came to earth as God the Son to fulfill the promise. He was born miraculously as his mother was a virgin. Just like us, Jesus grew up and experienced life on earth. But unlike us, Jesus never sinned and always obeyed the Father. When Jesus was in his 30s, he began teaching all around Israel, pointing people to God's kingdom and performing many miracles. After a few years, he was wrongly accused and sentenced to an agonizing death on a cross. Jesus lovingly gave up his perfect life as a sacrifice to pay for the sins of mankind. He died a perfect death, taking our place, the innocent for the guilty. But the grave couldn't hold Jesus. Three days later, God brought Jesus to life again. Jesus defeated sin by dying on the cross and defeated death by rising from the dead. Today, Jesus sits at God's right hand as king and judge over all creation. This is the story of rescue God has authored. He invites us, through repentance and faith, to make his story of rescue the one we trust in and live from. When we do, everything changes. And now, what will the future hold? For everyone who trusts in Jesus alone for rescue, God has promised to restore your heart and set you free from sin's hold. Because God is loving, kind, merciful, forgiving, tender-hearted, and true. God has also promised to make all things new. One day, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, forever free from sin. Everything that causes pain and sadness will be gone. God has also promised to be with us forever. The moment you trust in Jesus, your relationship with God is restored because Jesus has closed the divide sin caused. Getting to know this all 
loving God starts today and continues forever. For God's story never ends. You can make God's story the foundation of your life even now by admitting your need for God's rescue. Asking forgiveness for your sin. Trusting in Jesus Christ alone to rescue you. Following Jesus in faith from this moment on. This is God's story. Will you make it yours? We want to talk about restoration or reconciliation of the heart. Can I just ask you, start with a question. Is your heart uh, restored? And I really mean it. Is your heart restored? Okay. It is about the heart, isn't it? Christianity is about the heart. Uh, what does that mean? Restored, reconciliation, re, prefix again, right? Conciliation means peace, bringing enmity to peace. In other words, if you're not at peace, you're in hostility relationship with three things that I mentioned. With God, literally, I'm not exaggerating, okay? You are in enemy relationship with God and yourself and with your neighbors, okay? Just think about it. And probably the best place to see if I am... Uh, in restored or reconciled relationship is your relationship with your family members and I really mean it okay where do we see that right here Matthew chapter 3 verse 23 Jesus is speaking about anger okay see if you're angry or not you know people are so angry I don't know whether you knew anger is such a such an important emotion and theology in Christianity God is angry. Wrath of God. I don't know whether you knew. But that wrath stems from love. What do you mean? See, let me illustrate this. Do you get upset about uh, what's happening in the Middle East? Do you get angry? You do, but not really, right? But let's just say your own child is beat up by, let's say, 10 big guys. Would you get angry? And of course, answer is of course. Anger to a point where I would risk my life to save, save him and get rid of that source of, uh, you know, assault. What's the difference between what is happening in the uh, in Middle East? Isn't that atrocity happening in the Middle East much worse than that? Of course it is. But what is the difference? Your love and affection toward the person. Anger stems from love. Okay, and God is love and God hates anything that destroys his children okay I think that's where we need to stand and look at this he's talking about anger and just a couple of verses will set up everything let's say if you are offering your gift at the altar in other words you are worshiping right like right now okay and there you remember that your brother has something against you you just don't have the right relationship what do you do Jesus is teaching, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and worship. Do you hear it? Among other things, I think we could, what can we make out of this teaching? Your worship really is useless until your heart is set right with other people. Wow. Now, that's, a, that's a pretty significant teaching because over the years doing ministry with this generation or even older generation, not just Asians in Africa, we do ministry in Africa, in Philippines or Korea, in Europe, wherever you go, the issue is the same. You know what it is? You just have such a, such a distorted relationship with your close family members a lot of times your father a lot of times i know i i'm stepping on a very uh, dangerous area right now i remember some years ago 
some grown up men. He was about 35 years old. He was a graduate student. And after our uh, Light of Love ministry, he came to the front and he testified. And I, I shared this story before, but I want to share it again, only to just kind of like remind you and trigger you. And he came to the front after the retreat, really blessed. And basically, he is giving his testimony. Started out by saying, I detest, I detest my father. I detest, I detest my father. You know, what word that, uh, you know what that word means? Detest? You don't normally use that kind of word. Detest is, I think, strong hate. I even hate the, uh, the idea of thinking about him. Can you imagine that? You live like that? And then you get married, and then you try to parent another person. Can you imagine that? What are we going to do about that? Right here. As you are worshiping, reminded of His grace upon you, then go and reconcile and come back and worship. There are two relationships mentioned here. One is your relationship with your Maker. There is no way to ignore that. No matter how much you say, I don't care. There's just no way to ignore that. You know why? Because you came from Him. He made you. And you know what? You're going to be standing before Him. Right? And then there is a horizontal relationship with your neighbors, which go through you, of course. Your relationship with yourself. And then there are other neighbors, whole host of our neighbors. Let's say my co-laborers and my, you know, my neighbor who lives next door. But probably the closest neighbor to you is your family members. Mother and father, you are born of him. Don't you ever forget that. You were born of your mother and father. How do you just sever the relationship and you don't care? Right? So, what does the word reconciliation mean? Katalaj. Okay, I already explained. Re, prefix, again. Conciliation, conciliatory action is to overcome hostility and bring peace. Hostility. In other words, if you're not at peace with God in Christ, you are in enemy relationship with God. He loves you because He's love. Doesn't mean you are in okay relationship. You're not. Okay? You're not. Make no mistake about it. You're in a very risky, relation, ris risky place because you are in enemy relationship unless you are in Christ. Okay, the synonym would be a peace or peace. Okay, I think that's key word. Do you have peace? Do you have peace with yourself? What does that mean? You know what I, what I mean. Do you feel okay about yourself? Do you feel okay about your past? Do you feel okay about your family? Right? So, synonym is peace, and the original word katalaj, kata is a prefix, okay, and large means change from enmity or enemy relationship or to friend relationship. And interestingly, if you could remember this, it also means exchange. Very, very meaningful, okay? Reconciliation is exchange. Either you are in en enmity relationship, enemy relationship, or in friendship relationship. Can I ask you? You need to, you answer to yourself. Are you in friendship relationship with God? Or are you an enemy relationship with God? Or maybe you don't know, right? I hope Lord will speak to you today uh, as we go through this. Never once, William Barclay say, once God is said to be reconciled to man, it's always man who is reconciled to God. And we will see this because God wants to reconcile with you. It's such an ironic, ironic thing if you think about it. Because relationship is between the party, two parties, right? A and B, or husband and wife, or brother and a brother. Some sort of uh, relationship is always between two parties. Now, when there is a, like, twisted relationship, whose fault is it usually? Husband or wife? Husband? It's wives, right? 70, at least 70, 30%. Wives, whose fault is it? 
It's always husband. But the, I think truth of the matter is, in human relationship, it's never 100% and 0%. It's always 50-50% or 70-30%, 30-70%, or 95-5%, but it's never 100% fault. But the, different, the relationship is different with our God because God is holy. We cause 100% of the cause of broken relationship. So it should, be, it should not be Him who should seek after us, seek after uh, reconciliation. We should seek after it, but we don't. Do you want to be at peace with God? Not really, right? You want to, you're in your own life, don't you? That's our human wickedness. But somehow, he's the offended party, but he wants to bring relationship back to you. It just does not make sense right there from, from the beginning, right? So today's text, if you could just uh, look at this, this is an incredible text. I would say compatible to Great Commission. So I hope it draws your attention. This is compatible to great commission or great, great commandment. Go and make disciples of all nations. What is your life about? What is the, life, uh, what is the purpose of church about? I think this is what, uh, what it's dealing with. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old has passed away, and behold, new has come. Can I just ask you, are you in Christ? What does that mean? Are you sure? Are you in Christ? Are you outside of Christ? Youth group, up here. Are you in Christ? Now, I'm, I'm speaking to you. Are you in Christ? You should, th you should know this. Today I'm going to try to explain this. Pay attention. Because if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. If you are not, you are not. Okay, what does that mean? New creation. Creation is the is is the work only God can do. You do not create out of nothing. You can. We human beings can't do that. We could be creative, but we cannot create out of nothing to uh, everything. If you remember uh, Genesis one, God created the heavens and the earth from nothing. Ex nihilo. That's the theology. Only God could do that. Two greatest work of God in the scripture and Christianity is creation and redemption. And redemption is saving his people, and the Bible is calling that new creation. So it's a creation and new creation or recreation. The word recreation comes from that. Okay? And the Bible is saying, if you are in Christ, you are a new creation. I want to ask you, are you in Christ? I really mean it. If not, what are you in? Right? And then verse 18 is the key verse for today. All this is from God. Okay? Everything is from God. Who through Christ reconciled us to himself. Okay? And then second statement is he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, purpose of life. And I'm, I'm just going to read it once. And that is in Christ, God has reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses, meaning forgiving you. Only when the offended party allow you to come back, in his term, we could rebuild a relationship. Isn't that the case? God was offended and God wants to forgive you. Why? Why? Because God is God. God loves you. You don't love him, but he loves you. You are his enemy, but he still loves you. Don't you forget that. You are not so lovable. Love seeking, your enemy. You act like an enemy, but he loves you. And he forgives you. Against them. And entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. There is a ministry of reconciliation to whom? To those who are in Christ. If you're in Christ, 
Man, you lucked out. I'm telling you, the greatest thing in all my life is knowing you in Christ. I don't know whether you, you feel like that. I feel like that. I don't know whether you believe that. I believe that. Are you in Christ? If you're not in Christ, then where are you? Are you okay? And the Bible is saying, you're not okay. In fact, you're in great strained relationship with God as an enemy of God. Okay? Therefore, we are ambassadors. Who is? Those who are in Christ. We are ambassadors. We'll look into this word. A few things. Ministry of reconciliation, message of reconciliation, and forgiveness, and an ambassador for Christ. That's what our life is about. It's not about, you know, your profession as a, a medical professional or legal professional. It's not that at all. Those are the means. But the purpose of life is to be an ambassador of great kingdom that we say we believe, right? So we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. And we beg you, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Can I just beg you? Would you look at me? Yeah, I don't, look up here, please. Be reconciled to God. You need to be in friendship with God. Otherwise, you are in enemy relationship with God. Do you have any enemies in your life? Nara, do you have any enemies in your life? I hope not. But you could. Someone you hate. Someone you just despise. Can you imagine you are in despising relationship with God? Don't stay there. Be reconciled to God. Right? Let me just tell you something. You know what separates and makes you enemy of God? Sin. We just saw uh, the whole clip. Sin. What is sin? Sin is a direct offense to the face of God. That's what sin is. That's why it is so offensive. You're not God. I am God. That's what sin is. It's no small thing. Sin is a direct offense to the king. It's, it's, it's this, this disobedience and it's being, being, a, being a person of treason to the king. It's no small thing. He, he, doesn't take it, uh, he doesn't take it lightly. He does not. We take it lightly, but he does not take it lightly. Okay? What is the message of reconciliation? What is the gospel? The famous verse, verse 21. For our sake, he made him. Who is he? God. Who is him? Jesus. God made his son to be sin. Okay? So that you will be his righteousness. Do you see the exchange? And what is the purpose of that exchange? What is the basis of that exchange? You? It's not us. It's all from him, the Bible says. Definitely not from me. I don't even desire it. He made him to be sin. Who knew no sin? Who qualifies for that description? Only one person, right? So that in him, in Jesus, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. That's the uh, text for today. And I want to ask you again one more time. Please answer this. Are you in Christ? If you are not sure, please speak to us. We'll help you understand this. Please speak to us. Because I don't think this is something you should brush it off and then just kind of take a chance. I don't think you would want to take a chance on this. Let's say your insurance, uh, automobile insurance expired. Do you take a chance and then you just start, still drive around? You, you know, you could. I don't think you should, though. Because you get into an accident and, you know, that could be a big trouble. You don't take a chance on things like that. How much more about your relationship with the living God? You want to take a chance on that? Is mortgage more important? Is getting into graduate school more important than that? Is hanging out with friends could be more important than that? You, now reason with me, people. Reason with me. Right? 
So today's text, I want to just uh, mention a few things. Okay, verse 18. All this is from God. And two ma major statements. Can you look at this? One is, through Christ, God reconciled all of us to himself. We were enemies. Now we are in friendship and family. That's the gospel. If you're in Christ. Only if you're in Christ. And I want to say it again. Only if you're in Christ. Second statement is that not only he reconciled us, he gave us a purpose in life and as a church and as an individual that is to be, uh, be the ministers who are doing the ministry of reconciliation. That's what my life is about. That's what your life is about. Ministry of reconciliation. We are ministers. Huge statement right here. Be reconciled to God, right? All things are from God. Everything is from God. He reconciled us through Christ, first statement. That kind of explains the sta status. And what's the purpose? So that we could do the ministry of reconciliation. Do you hear it? First, this relationship is restored. And then you could do that kind of uh, horizontal relationship. So that the vertical relationship with God and other people who are enemies could be restored. I want to ask you again, are you in Christ? Are you in Christ? If you're not sure, chances that you may not be. And you shouldn't take a chance about that. Okay? So, everything is from God. The whole idea of it, the initiative, Christianity is always God initiative. You never ask for it. He just decides to come after you. Christianity is about God seeking after you. You don't really deserve it. You try to run away. You know, ironic thing about whole oh, Christianity is this. We cause the trouble, but we, want, we don't want that relationship to be restored because we are so basically wicked and sinful. We are. We are. And yet God seeks after you. All is from God, right? Idea is from God. Initiative is from God. Desire is, to, uh, is from God. Action is from God. And it is His great mercy. Why is it great? Because God is great and you are not. What are you? Mere dust, the Bible says. Me too. Mere dust. You die as it is without Christ, you're nothing but a dust. I'm sorry, but that's who you are. Right? But God's showing His great mercy because He's great God and we are not. We are rebels to Him. We are enemies to Him, haters to Him. Right? Can I ask you, do you have the desire to restore the relationship with Him right now? Do you? If not, why not? Our stubborn wickedness. Stubborn wickedness. Right? And it is all from God, which means He is the great reconciler. He is the one who reconciles. That's, the, that's, the, that's Christianity. That's the gospel. And it is only through Christ, which means, you know, if you, if you can look at me, cross looks like what? Cross looks like what? Ethan. Minus, plus. It looks like plus, right? Yeah, good job, right? Cross looks like plus. Only through the cross, you plus people to his kingdom. That's what the scripture states. Where do you see that? Right here. Ephesians 2.14. Uh, could, you, could you pay attention to this, youth group? Remember that you are at time separated from Christ. You're outside of Christ. Okay? Is that okay? You're aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenant of promise. And look at this description of you if you're outside of Christ. Having no hope. You have no hope. Do you have hope? I'm asking you, do you have hope? I sort of do. Do you really? Are you sure about that? Right? And without God in the world, okay? You have no hope. You're outside of Christ. 
But now in Christ, you who were once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Okay? Description of the cross, right? The great reconciler. The great reconciling message. Through the blood. Through the death. And Jesus, he himself, is our peace. I love that statement. Do you have peace? Do you have peace? Do you have peace with your father? Let me just rub it in a little bit. Do you have peace with your father? Do you have peace with your father? I think that's a great, great vantage point of where you stand right now. Okay? And Jesus himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh. Literally, his flesh, his flesh, his body is the bridge between the great chasm gap between God and you. Okay? The dividing wall of hostility. Okay, reconciliation by the way of the cross. And I think this is a good, uh, good, good uh, diagram, I think. God is here, and you are here. Okay? And this looks small, but there's a great chasm between you and God. There's no way you could go to Him. You don't deserve to go to Him. You can. You'll be consumed because of all your sin, all your hostility. You'll be consumed. I'll be consumed. But there's one way, and that's the cross, which is listed right here. It is through the blood of Christ and in his flesh. Okay, so that's the text for today. Can I just uh, explain a few things? Uh, some key teaching from the text. Okay, verse 18. Verse 18, all this is from God. This whole thing about finding peace, mending relationship, reconciliation, the whole story of Christianity is from God. You don't even desire it. You don't care. We're so foolish and stubborn and so just out of sync that we don't even care. Right? Do you care normally? We don't care. Why? Because, why did he do that? Because he loves you and he is love. Doesn't mean you are not his enemy. God loves his enemies. We don't, but he does. He's the great reconciler. It's his desire, his work, his action. While we were yet sinners and rebels and, and dead enemies. Uh, I don't know whether this is a good illustration, but would you hear me out? Let's just say... Taliban, Al-Qaeda, ISIS. I'm not saying they're the worst people. But they would execute Christians just because they are Christians. They would, right? He, but God, bring, wants to, God desires to bring peace with these people. They, he doesn't hate them. You may hate them, but He doesn't hate them. He wants to bring peace with Al-Qaeda people. You feel like, probably feel like I'm better than Al-Qaeda people. You're not, actually. You really are not. I'm not. But he desires to bring peace with Al-Qaeda, Taliban, ISIS, because he is love, and he loves them. Not counting their sin, okay? Forgiveness. In fact, he went on a great deal more, and he called you and I to be ambassadors of this great kingdom. Can I just ask you, let's say I'm an ambassador, what does that imply? Can you think about that? I'm an ambassador, you are an ambassador to, uh, to New York City. That's what the scripture is saying, you are an ambassador. Are you a citizen of US? <laughs> you are, but what does that mean? You are ambassador of another kingdom. Does that make sense? If you are living in your own kingdom, your country, you are not an ambassador. 
Meaning, when you are an ambassador of Christ or Christ's kingdom, you represent Christ's kingdom. Let me ask you, who has a better, who's stronger, Christ's kingdom or United States of America? Which one is stronger? You're not sure? It's Christ's kingdom. America will come to seize at one point. Every nation will be, Bible says. Okay, every nation will be. In fact, oh, actually, that's a bad example. Let me just say, another, one country you're living in, because I don't want to keep talking about U.S. This nation is in enemy relationship with Christ's kingdom, okay? And Christ reigns and is sovereign. He is sovereign king. And you are an ambassador. Would you cringe? Would you, should you cringe? No. You know why? Because you represent the greater kingdom. In fact, the greatest kingdom. Am I cringing before you? I'm not. I don't want to. Although I want to deliver with sensitivity and humility, but I don't think I should cringe before you. Right? Because I represent the sovereign. You are the one who needs mercy, not him. And I'm delivering that term. Right? Ambassador. I represent a kingdom. I represent the king. And I'm in a foreign place. This is not my home. Bible says it very clear. U.S. is not my home. This world is not my home. So my job is not change U.S., but delivering the uh, message of, of the kingdom. I hope you hear this. My job is not changing the politics, changing the culture. My job is to deliver this great message of reconciliation to you. Okay? If you humbly receive... This great message of mercy, you'll be saved. Okay? And you have a choice. You do have a choice. What's the choice you have? You humble yourself or you harden your heart. You really have a choice. Right? That's what it means to be an ambassador. I'm an ambassador. You are an ambassador. That's what I think that's what it means to be a church. Church is standing here, right? Church in New York City, we are ambassador. Meaning, we're not to change this culture of New York City, but delivering the message of reconciliation to this New York City. I hope you get it. That's, isn't that what it says? Isn't that what it says here? Right? All this is from God through Christ. We reconciled us to Himself, and He gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Isn't that what it says? People, right? And... That is in Christ, God has reconciled the world to himself, not counting their trespasses, but entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. I'm delivering the message of reconciliation. Are you in Christ? Otherwise, you are in a very dangerous place. Should your life end today? Should your life end today? God forbid, no, but should your life end today, you're in trouble. Right? You are. I'm delivering message of peace treaty from the great king. And all you need to do is receive it, right? He's not going to count your trespasses. But probably you're thinking, oh, that's cheap. Okay. Let me explain forgiveness, okay? Let's say uh, one of you drove on a shelter rock road, which... Uh, with, uh, I, th I think the driving um, speed limit is like 35 uh, miles per hour. But you drove 90 miles an hour, okay, like some of you do, right? Let's say you are caught and you are brought before the judge. I'm the judge, right? And I said, oh, Paul, I know you. Okay, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. I mean, that's nice. But is that nice? Is that just? Am I the right kind of judge? No. I know Paul, so I could do that. I know Dan, so I could do that. But if I just continue, oh, okay, forget it, forget it. I know, I know, forget it, forget it. If I do that, I'm not the righteous judge. I don't think I qualify to be the judge. God can't just say, okay, I forgive you. He can't do that. He is just, and he's the justifier. How did he do that? How? did he do that? That's the message of reconciliation. How did he do that? Right here. 
Okay, let me explain this. For our sake, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin. Okay, there are only two parts, okay? He made him sin, he made you righteousness. Let me explain the first part first. He who knew no sin, he placed him on the cross. If you just look at, look at me. And he became sin. Doesn't mean he became a sinner. The right word is counted or reckoned. Or a little bit more theological word is imputed. Which means clothed, put it on, on, on you. What does that mean? It means... Every single moment of Paul's life and sin Paul lived was placed upon him and treat Jesus as if he lived Paul's life on the cross. That's what it means. Does that make sense? It means every moment and thoughts and ideas and sin and wickedness I lived, God considered Jesus lived that life. For 54 years. And whatever I deserve to get, he was punished. That's what it means. He made him sin who knew no sin. Okay? Not fair. Not fair. It's not fair. Not fair, right? Because he doesn't deserve it. But he did that. What's the, the other part? You became his righteousness. How? He counted 33 years of perfect life that Jesus lived. Put it on you. 36, 33 years of perfect obedience and righteousness. He considered you lived that life. And he blesses you. And he just pours his grace upon you. Not fair. That's the message of reconciliation. You want to be reconciled to God? I'm going to consider 33 years of perfect obedience and love and peace that my son lived. I'm going to consider you lived. I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to count your sin against yourself, but against him, my son. So I'm a fair person, fair God, fair judge. That's the Christian message. Why would he do that? You figure that out. Why would he do that to you? Why would, it, why would he do that to you? That's his love. That's his love. And this love and this kindness I pray that will bring you to repentance. Will bring you to repentance. I think that's Christianity. If that's how he treated me, how would I treat my neighbor, my father? I'm going to leave my offering here. I'm going to go and make peace and then come back. Right? God has entrusted the ministry of reconciliation. That's what it means to be in Christ. When your heart is broken before that grace and kindness, that term of peace that is being offered to you, you know that's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. 
But that's what is being offered to you. One last. Jesus came, right? That's what, what Jesus said. Blessed are the peacemakers. Ministry of reconciliation. Peacemakers. They'll be called sons of God. Sons of God. They'll be called sons of God. We bring peace as an ambassadors of Christ, of great kingdom, and bring that great term, which may be ridiculous to people, right? But we explain to them, we preach to them, we deliver to them, so that they will find peace with God. Then perhaps you will have peace with your Father. Let's pray.